Hey, everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well, because it's time for another EP Love segment. I want to come in quick here, recommend some shorter releases that dropped as of late that I think are particularly good particularly dope. They're worth your time, and there's information about them linked down below. Just give them a try. And and the, these are them, along with my thoughts. Of course, of course, of course, we were not going to do one of these segments without talking about the brand new Caro Caro Benito EP, Civilization 2, the follow-up to the original Civilization EP they dropped a while back, which was also great. This one is pretty short as well. It's just three tracks, also lyrically dives into some apocalyptic end times sort of themes. In a way, with the world going to hell over the past year, it almost made it too easy to do exactly that, especially on the second track of the EP, which is a, a very pretty, serene, relaxed, day-in-the-life type track about the beginning of the lockdowns at the start of the pandemic last year. That track is certainly a personal, intimate, and moving moment on the project. The intro, The Princess and the Clock, is a return to the electropop form for the trio, but now coming at it with just brighter production, heavier beats, just a grander song structure all around. It's really cool that they were able to kind of recapture the original Benito Generation vibes on a new track, but do it in such a way where it feels more grand and ambitious. And then there's the closer, which is this multi-phased cut that features uh, some huge house influences. I'm loving just the endless grooves on this track and how dramatic some of the spoken word passages are. It's a versatile little EP, and I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping that uh, some of these great ideas carry over onto KKB's next full-length record. So we've got that project. The next one I'd like to push your way is, of course, the newest one from Corday, which, in the title, it, it says it right there. It's pretty much just here to hold us over for uh, the new record. But that doesn't mean it's not a good collection of tracks. I mean, the weakest thing about this uh, four batch of songs is the Q-tip hook on the intro, which I think is a little rough, not great. I think once the full beat comes in and Corday starts rapping, the song becomes a lot more compelling. But yeah, I'm just not really feeling Tip's sung vocals on that chorus. I don't think they go over well. I think they could have been redone for a better effect. Uh, that being said, though, the very personal angle of the following track, which features some beautiful chords, is uh, certainly a highlight. The Young Thug cut is a cold-blooded banger. And then the closer is a really lovely song in tribute to his mom and the sacrifices that she needed to make to raise him, raise his sibling, and also put him on track to be able to succeed in music in the way that he has. These tracks are essentially at the level of quality and heart and substance that we've expected from Corday up until this point. Uh, nothing particularly that's like blowing uh, the material on his debut out of the water, but still, it's like a pretty good batch of tracks and it really has my mouth watering for the new LP. Corday just continues to show why he's one of the most promising young rappers out there at the moment. Then finally, I would like to point out this new Four Degrees in Winter EP from a UK singer and songwriter who goes by the name of Rachel Chinariri. This is the most robust EP in the bunch on this video, and I will say, um, this is like some EP of the year material right here. I don't know how EPs are going to pan out for the rest of the year. I can't really say, but like I can project beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is going to be like easily in my top three. It's such a well-produced, well-sung, well-written, beautifully layered series of tracks that the more I listen to it, the more I'm impressed by the versatility, not only by the tracks and the elements that are so well done and influenced by alternative R&B, but also art pop, also uh, dance music, also folk 
as well. There are a lot of bases covered on this brief collection of eight tracks, and they're all covered so incredibly well. Not only that, but I'm just really mystified by the pretty vocal performances, and again, how layered these songs and the production are. Every single time I listen to it, I kind of peel back and reveal another nuance or sound or a little nugget hidden in there that I had missed before. It's just a very progressive, pretty, and forward-thinking set of songs, and I'm looking forward to hearing more from Rachel in the future. This was uh, great, and it's, it's funny to think that uh, uh, I just kind of came into this off of a few people just saying, hey, you should check this out uh, on Twitter. I did, and I absolutely uh, loved it. It's, it's great. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Those are my suggestions. Those are the EPs that I want to talk about in this video. You're the best. Thank you for watching. Hopefully uh, you enjoy them as much as I have, and I will see you guys in the next uh, one. Anthony Fantano, Tran, Zishin, have you given these EPs a listen? I hope so. Did you love them? Did you hate them? Why? Uh, what are some other short form projects that you've been enjoying as of late? And uh, yeah, yeah, I hope you're doing well. I, I just got my second dose of the vaccine. I'm feeling okay. Yeah, I'm feeling okay. Uh, Tran, no. <laughs> I'm tired though. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up very late right now. I've, lo I've lost my train of thought. Blah. Uh, forever.